Bam! Silicone, we use it everywhere, but it takes so much time to dry and that's terrible. Let's see together now some tests to see how to accelerate the silicone cure and curing time. But first, intro. So silicone cures with a chemical reaction. As soon as silicone gets in touch with the, the humidity that is in the air, a chemical reaction starts and it will start to cure up. So the more humidity there is in the air, the faster it will dry and cure. So that's the main reason in the Amazon forest we don't see windows attached to the trees because there's too much humidity. But we can take advantage of this reaction and let's test it in some water. Does the silicone dry faster underwater? Let's test it. The idea is very simple. We take two tests of with the same amount of silicone and let them cure. One will cure with the air, so using the humidity that is in the air, and the other one will go underwater. The curing time of this amount of silicone is 24 hours, but I want to let it cure for only half the time, so only 10 hours almost, and we can then see and test which one cures faster. So if the water really have an effect on the silicone curing time. So we can remove all the parts and just take a very sharp blade because now it's time to cut them open. So let's start with the one that cures with air and you can really understand that it isn't perfectly dry. This isn't a, isn't a surprise and you can see that the core of it is still dry. But now the most interesting part. Let's cut the one that cures underwater. You can see that it has a very, very thick layer on the outside. So something happened, but in the core of the silicone is still pretty good. So. so the result of this experiment is so interesting. We can clearly see that the silicone that was underwater dries up quicker, but so quick that it will, it will form like a shell all around the outside and this very, very dry silicone on the outside doesn't allow the water to cure the, the core of the silicone itself. So the core is always wet and the outside is completely dry and that's terrible. The solution could be to mix in a glass jar the silicone with some water so much that the water drops will, will stay inside the core of the silicone itself. But this isn't a great idea because it will change the structure of the silicone and also it will have so much steam bubbles inside the silicone doesn't work at all. So the solution is to think out of the box and take something that is constantly taking humidity from the air. I and mean, I'm talking about this silica gel. These are micro spheres of silica gel are used for plants. And you can clearly see that if you drop them inside some water, it will suck and absorb so much water that it gets so big. So these, even if we don't drop them inside some water, are constantly taking humidity from the air. If we open the cap, they are chasing and catching all the humidity, and that's what we want. So let's crush them with a hammer and mix them with some silicone. So these are very, very small balls of silica, and I want to crush them because the more finer it is the powder, the more effect we have the reaction, the chemical reaction. As all chemical reaction, the more finer it is the powder, the faster it will accelerate. I can use a hammer to crush it, and also on an anvil, it doesn't really work. It's impossible. Uh, unfortunately, these microspheres are impossible to crush. As soon as they suck humidity, they start to get soft like rubber and it's impossible to transform it in powder. We want powder and lucky for us, there is another kind of silica gel, which is betonite. It's basically natural clay that is cooked in the oven and it's so dry that as soon as it gets closer to humidity that is in the air, starts to catch this humidity. So let's try to crush it, mix it with some silicone and see if it cures faster. So this time I'm pretty sure we will have no problems at all. I have to crush these little stone balls and I can use a hammer. I not want to hammer it them, but just applying pressure with my hand is more than enough. And I just took like two minutes to crush them in powder. Very fine powder. I remember the finer it is, the faster the reaction will occur. So now I can take silicone and mix the proper amount of silicone. Consider that the ratio is almost 20% powder and 80% silicone. 
and after mixing it very carefully so that every little particle of powder get in touch with the silicone, I can let it cure with the same principle of before, so a very small glass, and after only 15 minutes we can cut it open. And it's incredible. This amount of silicone usually will take, will took almost like 24 hours to cure completely, but now only 50 minutes are more than necessary to cure it completely. And so finally, the theory of the humidity is working. We managed to cure all this silicone in only 15 minutes. Usually it will take more than 20 hours, so everything is working. But the plan of today is to let us find silicon and make our mold easier and faster. So is, this kind of silicon is very easy to find in the shops, but silica gel isn't and also betonite isn't easy to find everywhere. So the plan of today is to find something that can accelerate the silicon, but buy it in the grocery shop. So let's see what it is. What we need is always something that can catch humidity from the air and this is starch. So this is very, very cheap. You can find it in a grocery shop next, next to things you can cook for making cakes or things like this. We can take a transparent plastic bag so it's much easier to mix the two parts without creating a huge mess. So we can put also the silicone inside the bag and then add the proper amount of starch to this mixture. And it's so nice to feel how soft the silicone is. So the, amount, the perfect amount of ratio of the powder with the silicone depends on your needs. So usually this is the right ratio, 20% starch and 80% silicone, but the more starch you add to the silicone, the faster the reaction will get. So you can, if you put too much starch, the reaction will happen in all two minutes. Well, and finally this huge Silicon ball cures completely, which means that the starch works great. So also the core is dry out, and probably if I made this ball only with silicone, it would, it would take like three weeks to cure completely. So that's a catalyst that works great, but now let's test it in something practical. So let's test and make a mold for a fishing lure. And so finally, I can test for the first time a silicone mold with the silicone I just made at home. So the idea is to cut a corner of this plastic bag, push and squish the silicone out and fill completely the mold. So remember that one of the worst enemy in this process are air bubbles. So apply some pressure and move all the air bubbles and now take the thing, the object we want to have the mold. You can cover it with oil, but this isn't really the perfect solution. Later I will show you the best solution once you are making silicone mold and just squish it and push it almost halfway inside the silicone. The best way to have a mold release between the object and also between silicone with silicone is to use regular soap. So after pouring some water on top of the soap, I can take a brush and brush it over the object. Let the, let the soap and the water dry out. We will, we will end up to have like a very thin layer of soap powder that covers everything and repeat the same process after placing the other half of the wood box. Probably this little trick was handy to know when I built my LED, the huge one LED, was so difficult for me to create a mold. I used some wax, I cook it, I put the mold inside and it, was so, it took some, so much time. Using this starch and silicone method, I can just apply the silicone with a brush on top of the object and that's it. We, we have the object ready to be used. So. Now we know something new. But now finally the moment of truth. Let's see if I can open the box and you can see them the soap works perfectly as a mold release. Unfortunately, I didn't let the water completely dry, so I'm having a little troubles here to open the box, but finally the two parts came out great. The fish hasn't even stuck to the silicone, and we can see and appreciate the resolution of the silicone mold. You can clearly see the skin of the fish, the eyes, and everything came great. So this is, was just a very simple experiment we made together, but it's up to you. What are your needs and just take inspiration for my Wow, and finally, this opened a new world for my shop. This mold is so cheap to make, also so fast to cure up. I mean, 20 minutes so for something this big, usually it will take like three weeks, and now I have all the molds I need for all the things I need. So <laughs> let me know what you want to mold with this method. Please 
don't say something <laughs> that is dirty. But by the way, let's see now if the normal silicone glue things just like the silicone with starch inside. I took some marble, add some silicone and see if the two parts glue perfectly. So we can see that the normal one has a perfect adhesion and is almost very difficult to remove it, but the one with starch is much easier to remove it. Which is something I would say like a bonus for us because if it, the silicone with starch doesn't stick perfectly to surface, that's amazing because we can create mold much easier and it works great. Consider that the more starch we add to the silicone, the less glue, glue we <laughs> glue F, the less glue effect we have on the surface. So consider that as well. So at this point, I leave you my here my two previous projects. Check it out and see you next week with another do-it-yourself tutorial. And remember that this is the only YouTube channel that talks about tutorials. I share with you my experiment, my passions, my all my hobbies and things I want to create for my my life to enjoy the life. So check them out and see you soon. Ciao ciao.